that's running its engine for an hour and see what happens with that too. See, these are the things I'm a programmer, so not a farmer. Don't know anything about farming except what I read or I watch on the internet. Read and watch on the internet. But all this uh, programming stuff, because essentially this is a computer program. Testing a computer program, a yeah, program to see what the uh, the programmers who created it have set up is very interesting. I think I was discussing earlier about uh, how crop sensors have actually changed since they were implemented. Uh, originally you had to have things growing in the ground, but now apparently you don't. You can just... We could actually have that Deutz uh, spreading solid fertilizer out of that if I bought a solid fertilizer tank for it. With the crop sensors on and get full um, credit of environmental score along with ideal nitrogen levels. And your, oh, okay. Way. That way. And go. And with with fertilization, you're actually fighting two things. You're fighting ideal um, nitrogen levels for the crop that's in the ground, and that's that's handled base game by automatic application of fertilizer. And then you're trying to maximize your environmental score, which is handled by running around with a sprayer or spreader with crop sensors turned on. That's the best score you can get. If you don't have the crop sensors, you can run around doing automatic fertilization and you'll end up with a, I don't know, 75% nitrogen score instead of 100%. Anyway, we are nearly done with this field. I think unless Mrs. Osa turns up in ooh, the next 15 minutes, we're going to get this field done and then we'll call it a day. If she turns up in the next 15 minutes, obviously I'm going to need to go as soon as she gets here. We should probably eat food. Though that said, she did say I should text her if I felt that she could go and buy some food for me. But sometimes when she says that, she'll text me and say, I'm just leaving, what do you want? So, who knows? Anyway, we'll get on and get this done. So next week I'm guessing I'm not moving forward from September 1. Um, what I might do is um, run the um, perishable sales today off camera and we'll pick up with another soy soybean field next week. Or I might not do anything, we'll pick up with a soybean field next week. Um, September 2 will probably be our contract day. We also have to mow the field, so I might, uh, once the soybeans are cut, we'll use our light tractors to um, mulch and seed and things like that whilst our John Deere's cutting grass and doing all of that funky stuff. And um, yeah, that sort of thing. And I might, uh, I don't know, I should, I should probably sell the perishables today. Just because Tonight we're going to lose another 10,000. 
I'm running workers which is draining the bank balance and doing a perishable sale is worth about 14,000 pounds so that's an extra day of uh, drain on the bank account I mean as I've said the productions are a good way of alleviating daily costs on the farm. If your, daily, if your productions are producing more than the daily costs are um, draining you, <coughs> you can't run out of money unless you do stupid. And I'm kind of trying not to do stupid, but yeah, our, 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 our ability to create in clean income is limited because of some of the rules I've set like we can only contract one day a month we can only or we must sell our perishables every month and it doesn't matter what day we sell them we just have to sell them every month and because of those rules um, I'm not selling perishables at the best price Sometimes one, one, one twelfth of the time they're sold at the best price, one twelfth of the time they're sold at the worst price. But you know, they, they are at least a constant income. The other option is, of course, let's do that. Go there. Check to that. Least items. We have this thing, which is daily cost. Um, how much does it cost to purchase that? 113,000. So that is still a lot of money buried. And this one is uh, 83,000. So that one's going to be easier to redeem the leasing costs and cut down on our daily costs. But 83,000 is still a chunk of change we have to come up with in order to not incur that daily cost and the daily cost is actually reducing the payoff amount <coughs> so it's not too sad a thing I think the other thing problem I might have is obviously we have um, the grain mill <coughs> going all out at the moment so it's at its maximum cost because we are producing or we were producing four lines of uh, flour we're now down to just two and potentially um, actually I was that was a thing we're going to have to ship that out aren't we uh, not the, that one um, not that one we're at 42,000 litres of flour at that facility. Um, I have to ship it out before we get to 50. Because I think then it stops producing. But I'm still I, I probably still paying production costs. It's just not actually producing stuff. So we have to clear that out. But once I've got 100,000 litres shipped over to the bread factory, whatever you call that thing, um, oh, it's a thing, um, bakery, yeah, if I've, yeah, once I've got 100,000 litres at the bakery, all of the extra flour at that point, I can just sell to pad out the bank account. Reason being, because there is nothing I can do yeah I can keep dumping flour at the at the bakery but it makes no odds where yeah it's never gonna be converted into bread over the next the course of the next year so I might as well take advantage of just making some money off the excess It's what we were doing with the milk at one point. We were producing, we, we produced so much milk that effectively, I think we were producing 75,000 litres of milk a month. And, uh, that part there. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But 
the factory could only process about 25,000 litres, so sell 50 just because I've got no capacity to do anything with it and process the other 25. And, uh, yeah. That is the control point of uh, productions. Yeah. A production can only produce so much per year. <coughs> so just um, yeah, produce as much as you can for for what it can do. And either buy another production if you're producing more or um, sell the base material because Otherwise, it's just going to stack up in the production facility and will never be used, ever. That's, that's doing nicely. Okay, so I did say we were going to go and get the Mulcher and the Massey Ferguson, and we can go and deal with that field that we've just finished harvesting. I'm going to park this up in the yard. Uh, this is a good a place as any. And Land Rover, yes. With this header, I'm going to stick this in the field across the road so that I can just drive the harvester across, attach it, and go. This is doing fine. There's a little bit at the top. Or is it northeast side of that field that doesn't get done because it sticks out a bit too much? And we have to do the rows at the end, but for the most part, it's a good, successful, yeah, it's getting there. I wish it would go faster, but I don't have that capability. Oh, nice. I'm right where I need to be. So, back off, let both of those go past. And you're not right where I need to be, so I can get this across and not kill anything. And possibly crush a hedge with a Land Rover. How about that? good and we'll stop that there. Oh we've run out of seed. Well I suppose that's my next job. I think I've got spare seed. That's actually an interesting question. Ugh. into things let's hmm okay turn on cedar deactivate okay. center low cedar full cedar select seed uh. Uh. okay let's push that button Open cover. Why is open cover unmapped from? Um, I don't know. Oh, we got 545 litres of seed. Um, again, another slight issue.
And I believe it was button eight. Yes. Close that and get this back on the field again. So where's the mulcher? The mulcher is the bat wing. I think I might put the back wing over here since it's another field prep piece of equipment not being used as a mower anymore. And I guess we were... Oh yeah, I can see it. Such a big working width, I can hardly spot where um, we got stopped. Anyway, you can go. And off goes whoever that dude is. We'll call him Mike. So, we are seeding, we now, oops, wrong way, get the back wing. Okay. So, yeah, since back wing is now in permanent mulcher mode, I don't really need to store it at this farm. The only thing I need here, as I said, was... The manure tanks, slurry tank, manure spreader, and uh, the grass cutting gear. And this is no longer our primary grass cutting gear. So, now once we have mulched, we're going to want to spread manure on that field. Actually, I need to check what the nitrogen level is on that field. Um, reason being that uh, since soybeans are not affected by nitrogen levels, everything is perfect for a soybean. I wonder if harvesting a field that had soybeans on it also doesn't diminish the nitrogen levels in that field. So basically you get a perfect environmental score, perfect yield from fertilization because soybeans don't factor in nitrogen and then also if they don't deplete the nitrogen. I have heard uh, people say what, what should actually happen is soybeans should replenish the nitrogen in the field because that's what they do. That's why a lot of people will plant soybeans, corn, soybeans, corn, soybeans, corn, because the corn drains a lot of nitrogen from the field, and then the soybeans replenish it a little bit. Okay, so we are back here with the this. Something our former foster daughter used to say. I have the this, and it does the that. But you'd have to look at her to see what the this is. Because she wasn't... Frequently she didn't know what she was... You know, what, what, what the this was. So she just says, I've got the this, the this. Uh, because, you know, she didn't have the word. Okay, you can unfold that and go and um, let me check nitrogen in this field. Like I said, uh, pH nitrogen. This field has uh, not exactly the greatest levels of nitrogen. The question is really going to be 62, because 62 has 180, 160, 200. That has almost maximum nitrogen in it. And the soybeans don't really need it. That is getting mulched and looks no different. But we should be getting credit for it. So let's go there. And harvested, mulched. Uh, where am I? I am in this field here, and that's saying that edge is mulched. 
So, mulching done, needs rolled, now that we've harvested it. This is getting seeded and will need to be, actually that needed to be rolled before we harvested it. So this will need to be rolled after we've finished planting. And that's the tract we use for that. Now it's time to say, well, I wish I could have had the uh, Valtra G just back then. Oh well, Massey Ferguson. What? Oh, you're a Massey Ferguson. I thought you were a uh, JCB. Shows how much I know. Anyway, let's haul this off to our thing. So that field's nearly planted. But the thing is, is we have a lot of fields to plant. We've got one, two, I don't even know. The one in front of us is planted and rolled and now growing and needs all the liquids. This one won't need the liquids until October. And then we've got a whole bunch of fields up at the other farm that need all the things and all the stuff. Fortunately, we've we've prepared most of the fields. We've got to mulch the three soybean fields once they're harvested. we got to spread manure on the, those three fields as well. And then we can think about planting all of them or not so much of them, depending on what crops we want to grow this coming year. Now, I do want... My, yeah, one of my two biggest fields needs always needs to have barley because that's that's a big thing for this farm. For uh, um, cow feed, but uh, everything else, you're sat there. You're good. You're oh, we have a lot of butter. 13,000 13, litres of butter. We might want to uh, seriously think. Let's see, uh, 422,000 litres of milk there. Uh, at the production rate we're going, it's going to be year eight before we use up all of that, which is why I'm not too worried about the cows aren't producing any milk. And they're still not producing any milk. This is now 24 months old, so I'm guessing. I have to go four more months, possibly. So 28 months, this will have babies. We'll have 30 new cows in the shed. And these 30 cows might actually start producing some milk. So we'll get up off to 26, 25. Um, these guys are, what, three months behind. And then we'll seriously start producing milk, actually. These guys are five cows. Also for, they're 23 months old, but they're 60% through reproduction. Those are 60 to 24. Um, yeah, and then those are 21. So I'm thinking, okay, if you buy, if you go and buy cows at 18 months, they start producing a new cat, you know, baby cow. But month one of the baby cow is on when they're 19 months old. If you have young cows, then at 17, at 18 months, they will be one month into reproduction. So these cows were bought at 18 months old. These cows were raised to 18 months old, so these cows are a month ahead of those cows on making babies. Working assumption. Anyway. Um, oh, good grief, look at their money. We bought seed, that's why we don't have any. And we have workers going on, but the workers are just ticking over. That's not a big deal. We have soybeans there. This guy is nearly done with planting. And 
then we need to send him somewhere else to plant more barley. I'm probably going to plant them in the field next to the pigs. I don't know. I might plant it in the two fields with uh, with beehives on them. We are going to need to buy some more beehives on the two fields that we planted canola in already. So a couple of beehives up that on that field and a couple of beehives on the big field over by our arable farm. But I'm trying I'm not trying to overload on bees. What I'm trying to do is we'll buy bees to improve the production in canola. Um, do they affect canola and um, uh, canola and stuff? Uh, construction. Anyone else? Beasts. Um, oh. Slightly increased yield on certain crops. Guessing there might be something in the help menu that says which certain crops those are. Yield boost. Oh. oh icons. Uh, that, that's not going to help me. Uh, catch crops. Grain crops. Grass root crops. Corn plant. Proving yield. Picking noise. Stone picking does not improve yield. Um, rolling does, mulching does, animals, bees. Uh, beehives produce honey, canola, sunflowers, potatoes. So we could get into sunflowers and have improved yield where on those fields where we have bees but the whole idea is as I plant canola in a field I'll put a couple of beehives around that field so that we get improved production there and when I get back to planting canola in fields that already have beehives we'll just leave it be um, but yeah looking at improved production so here we are another day in paradise well maple farm at least um yeah, I think there is definitely a call to sell our perishables, although we'll only make about fourteen to 20000 depending on what the price is like. But that will cover us two days of uh, doing all this. Um, barley's kind of well. Barley's not a bad crop to, to plant. It's just not as good as canola and seed usage. We're also going to have to buy some herbs like that's a problem. Um, although that said, with the spot sprayers, it might not be too much of a problem because we're very efficient in our herbicide use, but I might need to buy a bit more, which is going to cost us. And the same with fertilizer. How much manure have I put down on a field and what's the demand for the crop we are planting? So this, ooh, hello, this field here, nitrogen bad. We've got to put 60 kilos per hectare here, uh, but we did 120, got us a good way out of it. At least we're not putting down 120 kilos per hectare. Um, which would cost us twice as much. So yeah, one of the reasons why we do do the, uh, the manure thing. Over here, there's a little netty speckers running around. So, I will say thank you for watching. I will be back next week, which I believe is Easter. Um, with some more from Maple Farm, and we will continue preparing our fields, planting our fields, harvesting the soybeans, and just general mayhem and eventually what might happen is we'll make some money and be able to hold on to it for a little while but november's going to be our big income month when we get round to selling our canola anyway for now i wish you all a good weekend 
and I will see you next week. For now, I am out of here. Have fun, everybody.